Today, we're going to take a closer look at carbonated beverages and find out what makes them bubbly and what makes them go flat, plus why it matters which glass you drink them from. From soda and seltzer water to beer and sparkling wine, carbonation adds a unique texture and flavor to otherwise simple beverages. Now, a carbonated liquid is one that has been super saturated with carbon dioxide gas. The amount of carbon dioxide that dissolves in a liquid is dependent upon the amount of carbon dioxide in the headspace above the liquid in a bottle. Now, in a closed bottle, the CO2 in the liquid and headspace are at equilibrium. That is, there's no movement of CO2 in either direction. Now, one variable that greatly affects how bubbly your seltzer gets is the temperature of the liquid at the time of carbonation. In the test kitchen, we ran an experiment to see how important water temperature was when making seltzer at home. We used a home seltzer maker to carbonate water at 32 degrees, 68 degrees, and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. We then brought each sample to 40 degrees before tasting them. The differences were dramatic. The 32 degree water turned out incredibly effervescent, while the 140 degree water was barely carbonated at all. The 68 degree sample sat right in the middle of these two extremes. A quick check of some scientific literature confirmed our observations. Water at 32 degrees can hold five times more carbon dioxide than water at 140 degrees. So, for the fizziest seltzer and soda, start with ice cold water. But let's get back to the matter at hand. We know a closed bottle of soda is in equilibrium. But what happens when we open it and pour a glass? Well, all of a sudden we no longer have equilibrium. There is an excess of carbon dioxide molecules in the liquid compared to that of the air above it. What happens is that the carbon dioxide dissolved in the liquid will escape into the atmosphere until a new equilibrium is reached. That new equilibrium will correspond with a word we are quite familiar with when talking about soda, flat. The gas escapes in two distinct ways, directly through the surface of the drink and through bubbles that rise from within the liquid to the surface. Now it turns out that the glass you choose to drink out of can have a big impact on how quickly all of this happens. Let's compare champagne poured into a coupe glass versus a flute. As is probably obvious, the coupe, with more surface area, loses carbon dioxide much more quickly. This means that sparkling wine served in the coupe is more aromatic and fizzier right off the bat, but it quickly goes dull and flat, while a flute glass produces steady bubbles and enticing aroma from the first sip all the way to the last. But surface area isn't really the whole picture. The rate of bubble formation is also an important factor in determining how bubbly your bubbly will be. Bubbles form in a bottle or glass of any carbonated beverage through a process called heterogeneous nucleation. Nucleation refers to a phase change, in this case a liquid to a gas, and takes place at nucleation sites. A nucleation site is a location with a pre-existing microscopic gas pocket where bubbles can form. These gas pockets can be found in irregularities in plastic or glass bottles and cups, or more commonly, in tiny pieces of debris that are stuck onto these surfaces. That's right, small fibers or dirt help make your champagne and beer bubble. Want to see it in action? In front of me, I have two glasses of freshly poured club soda. In this hand, I have a piece of lava rock, which is incredibly porous and covered in tiny holes. In this other hand, I have a smooth steel ball bearing of roughly the same size. Now I will drop each into the separate glasses and we'll see what happens. Well, it goes without saying that the lava rock produces a lot more bubbles, both initially and over the long run. The reason, of course, is it's covered in potential nucleation sites. It has hundreds of tiny divots and gaps where debris can rest and gases can get trapped. On the other hand, the ball bearing has a relatively smooth, clean surface leading to much less active bubble production. So, what have we learned? For the fizziest seltzer, you want to carbonate cold liquid. The best glass for sparkling wine is the slender flute. And the key to a perfect glass of champagne is an imperfectly clean surface. This is the science of good cooking. <laughs>